Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Ferris State University and runner of artbysmitty.com. Today we're going to be going over um, creating tileable textures using Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is this is going to be a hybrid technique that incorporates using uh, pictures and also some hand painting. Um, this is more important for things if you're working at a studio where they need a certain texture for a game or a movie that's more specific, specific other than just a photo you'll find on cgtextures.com or um, just taking photos by yourself. So I'm using this for reference, um, just through some quick references together. This is a screenshot from Orbs. He's an environment art, French environment artist, and if you Google Orbs Zebra Central, you can see some of his work, which is fantastic. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say File New and I'm going to create uh, a 512 by 512 at 300 dpi at 8 bit color mode. Say OK. OK. Um, first thing we do, we have a background layer. Just going to create and uh, double click it. Hit BG, uh, unlocks it for us. I'll create a new layer and I'm going to hit B for brush and come here, select the hard edge one. Opacity is at 100 and I'm just going to basically dial this down. Um, so first things first, I hit G on the keyboard. Um, G will activate my paint bucket. Pick a color here, a nice brown, middle saturation, and I'm going to go ahead and fill that layer with this color. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to just grab a solid black, hit B, and what I'm going to do now is just start painting um, the lines where the lava is going to be flowing. Um, and right now, this is just very, you know, mixing some hard edge with some nice curvatures, mimicking nature. Nature has very rarely has super sharp edges. Um, even if something is straight, it's usually curved or jagged or s in some form. Okay, you'll see in this texture I have some, you know, a few large pieces to the puzzle, um, you know, here and here and here and here, followed by some smaller ones scattered throughout, which is kind of important when trying to break up your tileable textures. Um, and the more of these little plates I create, the more detail um, it's going to have and the harder it's going to, it'll be, it'll be harder to notice that it's actually tileable. Um, okay. So now that we, I kind of have this template going, um, we're going to use you know one of the most basic um, ways to create something tileable, and that's by going filter, other, offset, and I've already had this at uh, you know 256, and hit OK. And now I can work on um, filling these seams together and create making this tileable and work together. Uh, hitting E for eraser, and that'll let me, right now it's set, set to the feathered brush, but I want it to be hard. Um, it's very important that these lines are crisp right now at this stage in the texture. I'm just switching between brush and... Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to say filter other offset, and um, by moving this another 256 horizontally, it's just going to put it right back into place um, where I originally had it. I'm going to hit OK. Um, I'll do this again, except I'll have 0 in horizontal, and I'll change it to vertical this time at 256. And now I'll go in and kind of fix these seams. Okay, that looks good. I'll go filter, other, offset, and put this back into place. So now those all those lines are going to be tileable when I 
and, and that's the whole goal is to have this thing be tiled. So I'm going to come in here and add a little bit more um, details as far as you know rocks breaking up and having um, just making the, the texture more interesting to look at um, than if it was just all evenly sized plates of rock. Um, nature is very random and that's my reasoning behind doing this. I'm also adding some bigger gaps here um, in some corners um, just to show that some rock, because for these rocks to break up into these little pieces obviously rocks need to be um, chipped away or broken up apart and there, so there needs to be some empty holes in, in some areas to allow for movement uh, between these plates. Okay, so I have these lines defined pretty well now, and you'll notice um, those are on their own separate layer, which is nice, because then I can take the wand tool by hitting W or hitting this up here, and just, you know, selecting, um, you know, my selections here, and, and getting some, um, you know, isolating areas of my texture that I want. But you'll notice this background layer is just one solid color. If I were to hit wand on this layer, it selects the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to this layer where the lines are painted on. I'm going to name it Lines. I'll name this one Fill. And w going back up to the lines here, I'm going to, you know, select the areas that are not the lines. And you can actually see that my tolerance is set to 50, so it's allowing me to have a, a, a better selection. Um, and I could have actually bump that up more, but I'm going to call this fine for now. And I'm going. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to hit select inverse. So now if I hit B in my brush, um, you can see I'm only painting in. Um, if I were to pick a different color like red, I'd only be painting in that area. So selections in Photoshop, um, all in here, really helpful, really useful. Um, and so what I'm going to do now that I have all that selected, I'm just going to create my brush really big and make sure that these, you know, these lines are filled completely. Um, I'm going to say, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is with the selection, I'm going to go here to mask and that's going to create a new mask. So um, if you're, if you try to start painting now, um, it's not going to do what you want. You see it's actually painting on the mask right here. And so I'm going to undo, and I'm going to select the icon next to it. And now that'll actually let me to, uh, you know, um, without having anything selected, I can come in here with red and just paint these areas. Um, you can see here, you know, um, it's actually painting everywhere, but the mask right here is, you know, isolating it here in the viewport, which is nice, which is what we want. Okay, um, so we have a layer for the rocks, um, or for the cracks. Next thing we want to do is add a layer for the rocks. If I come back down to my line layer and hit um, W, whoops, we don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to keep. I'm going to actually go back to the point before I started painting on those lines. Okay, I'll hit W again. Okay, so now I have this, the rock area selected. I'm going to create my new layer. Call this one rocks. That one's already called lines. And what I'm going to do is hit B for brush and come back over this with slightly uh, slightly different color something I actually might try doing something like a blue um, very desaturated I come in and paint okay and now I'm going to hit the mask button and that creates its own mask um, if I turn off this fill layer um, you can see since I was using you know a tolerance of 50 that it, it there were some areas that it didn't quite pick up. So I'm going to undo add layer mask and with this selected I'm going to say select modify expand and I'm going to expand it by one pixel. Okay and now I'm going to come in and I'm going to say first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint because you know I added a, a one pixel increase around all these borders so I want to make sure there's enough paint and all of that. And now I can add a mask.
and you see that little white line we were getting earlier is now gone and so if I wanted to paint on simply you know the rocks with a yellow it's only going to paint on the rock area and without filling in the cracks which can be very nice okay uh, next thing we want to do is kind of add a bevel to these rocks um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to right click blending options bevel emboss now this is useful but at the same time um, we don't want to rely on this completely. Um, if I were to go in here and hand paint these bevels, it would take forever. So this is just a quick fix to get me, um, just just to get me started. I'm going to say technique will be chisel hard, give that rock look, um, size, you know, um, different sizes could be fun, you know. So we'll, I'll, I'll make it kind of big here. I'll say something like 10. Whoops, not 100. Although that did look kind of cool. Hmm. I'm actually going to run with this um, because I kind of like that. Um, okay, so I'll say okay. And one thing you'll notice is that now so with this bevel emboss thing on, you know, it's it's going to make these bottom areas dark and these top areas very light. Um, so if I were to go filter and offset this, um, you know, you can see that well, I guess it's kind of lining up pretty well. So we'll, we'll call it good. Mm -hmm. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, select the beveled one, hit Control E, and collapse those two layers. So now I c to go back to my selection, I can always come back to this layer with the mask, select it, and come up to this layer where I'm going to be painting, um, and and do it that way. You know, you could have add a mask to this layer, but um, I always like to separate my layers as as much as I can. So I'm going to say new folder call this one just masks or I'll call this one to avoid any confusion confusion I'll call this selection and I'll move this layer down and move I don't need fill layer anymore I always like having a background layer just for the heck of it so move these guys into the selection I can minimize that and clean up my workspace um, just a little bit so with this guy selected I'm gonna say um, filter artistic do something like a cutout, not really sure what it's going to look like. I'm just kind of playing with some different uh, rendering techniques here. Um, and you know this is in place of hand painting, but sometimes can be very effective um, when you're on a, on a tight schedule or budget. So that gave us some cool stuff. What I don't like about it is that it created some really dark blacks. So if I lower the opacity of this layer down, um, you can see Okay, so now it's giving, I kind of want to mix between, you know, a hand-painted look like this and uh, a realistic look. So, um, a very cool art style. With this selected, um, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some other techniques. Um, so, one thing I did is I got this image of a paper bag. I just googled it. Um, it's paper actually looks a lot like rock when you crumple it up, you know, especially paper bags. Um, so I'm going to paste this layer in here and I'm just going to make this nice and big so I can fill everything. And what I'm going to do is say play with some different filter options like mm, say overlay or soft light um, and just see what I get. So I do like this overlay, but I don't like the color, and it's too strong. Um, and I'm actually going to not do this just yet. So I'm going to select it and just can it for now. Um, okay. Next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this lines layer, move it out of the selection folder, with this selected, I'll go to Blending Options. I'm going to say Color Overlay to kind of get that lava. And I always like to start out with my darks. You know, dark red, dark orange. Remember, this is lava. It is glowing, so it's not going to be... It's going to have some contrast, but it's still going to be very bright and vibrant. So I'll do an, an orange kind of like this. 
um, and we will say OK. Next thing I'm going to do is say I want this color to be like a, a saturated brown. This one can be a very dark blue. Say OK. I'm going to create a new layer, call this one Filter Render Clouds. Turn this top layer off um, so you can see what I'm doing. Filter Render Difference of Clouds. And I'm going to actually, if you do Difference of Clouds a few times, you can get these kind of veiny, interesting looking details. Um, Filter, render, difference of cloud. Okay, so this is kind of cool. I'll go to image, adjustments, I'll go to le my levels, and I'll just kind of make this somewhat interesting. So, so now, since the selection layer is 43%, it's giving me this weird opaque look. So I'll duplicate this rocks layer again, move it up here. Okay, and we're actually going to scratch all of that, what I just did. So now we have this going okay. Um, this layer is still a little bit strong. Um, okay, so that looks much better. It looks more like the effect I'm going for. Um, I will say, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this layer, hit W for my wand, select everything, come to this layer, and I'm just going to start painting with my paintbrush. And, and another thing is, you know, when you're, when you're painting rocks or any kind of tileable texture, um, you know, always keep in mind that there should be a light source in your scene or new texture somewhat, um, at least when you're painting with the intentions of only using um, a diffuse texture. If you're using things like normals and specs and you want it to be real time, then um, you should be painting with only, um, you know, just your diffuse color without any shading or shadows um, or anything like that. I'm going to maybe come in here and add some really darks, start doing some different colors, um, because very few times in the world you'll see anything that is not very colorful. Especially rocks. Rocks have all kinds of colors in them. You know, take a photo of a rock sometime and do and grab the color picker in Photoshop and, and just see how many different crazy colors are in that thing. And I'm even coming in with some some greens and adding some green texture onto this guy. I'll select my lines and I will actually just say come up here on the very top, hit G. I'm going to hit maybe this color and maybe make it a little bit lighter fill it oops we want that on a new layer okay I'll say blending I'll say uh, no color overlay but we do want an outer glow and that outer glow needs to be an orange we need the size to be a little bit larger. And maybe more red. Hit OK. Hit OK. All right, so now what I want to do is come in here and you know, I can turn this off and on. Hit M, just select somewhere, and now I'm going to hit my E for my eraser button and I'll come in here and lower the opacity and just kind of get rid of some of this, you know. Just break it up a little bit. OK, 
Okay, another technique I'm going to do is come here. Um, I'll duplicate my rock slayer. And I don't want to duplicate that one. Uh, I want to duplicate the original one, bring it up top, say the opacity down here, and blending options, and maybe a smaller. Hit OK, and one thing I want to do with this layer is create a new one, select it, Control E, and you can see this layer is kind of washing out everything else, and that, that's fine for now. Um, I'll hit E, activate my eraser. I want to activate feathered, feathered one, and I'm going to actually start erasing some of these edges. You'll see, you know, up at the top here, it created uh, a bevel line that I don't want, and down here, it created a dark bevel line. That I don't want along. Also, with the side, um, I'm just going to get rid of this. Maybe move this up, stronger opacity, and I'm just getting rid of this line because it's going to cause issues when we start tiling this texture, and we don't want that. Okay, so we now have something you know, that kind of breaks this up a little bit. Um, and maybe we can even try making it an overlay layer and, and splitting up some of the the darkness here, you know? All right. Go up to this layer. I'm going to also collapse this layer and say image adjustments levels and I'm just going to make this higher contrast give it some lava look say OK I'm making my baseline layer very bright yellow, kind of a, even a hint of green, um, just to kind of break this up a little bit and give it some interesting details. I'll hit E, I'll come up to this bright orange layer, and you'll see maybe I'll, I'll lower this opacity down, and you'll see some of these bigger areas will be, you know, kind of like bright yellow. And so I'm just kind of adding some. Um, you know, some, some variations to the lava. And maybe just getting rid of some of the outer glow stuff in some areas. You know, maybe the lava is actually, um, you know, closer to the surface in some areas. So maybe it's really bright yellow, and maybe it's really deep in some other areas, so it's really dark red, you know. Um, just give it some some cool, you know. The th the key about tileable textures is just keeping them very, you know, random. And so when they tile, it's really hard to see that they're actually tiled. If you play World of Warcraft, you know they do a fantastic job with their textures and um, making giving them that tiled look. Okay, that's looking kind of cool. Uh, okay, so I'm going to create a new layer, and this one's just going to say, you know, pass one, and all these guys can go and pass one. So now if I turn this folder off, I see what I started with, you know, I can just kind of see some progression here. Um, I'll duplicate this layer, so I can always go back to it if I want, and this one will be pass two. I'm going to create all the, or I'm going to duplicate all these, control E, and I'm just going to run some color adjustment type stuff. Um, the levels look pretty good. I'll say auto color, contrast, and tone. Oh, okay, tone's a bad idea. And you're going to see the differences we get here, which kind of gives it a more natural, interesting look. Um, so one thing, I do really like the lava, but I feel like my rocks are starting to get washed out. Um, so what I'm going to do now is maybe um, come in and start doing some hand painting type stuff, um, just customizing these rocks a little bit. Um, so I'll go in here, 
I'll pick, you know, some kind of light color. I'll hit B for brush and just uh, come in and, and start doing some painting. But before I do that, I want to, you know, isolate my rocks on this new layer. And I'm actually going to set this layer to soft light. And yeah, so the painting when I'm doing it close to the edges, you know, that stuff we're going to have to go back and fix um, as far as tiling goes. Because what I do here on the left hand side is going to be different than what I'm doing on the right hand side. So it's a constant battle to keep that tileableness going um, at all times. Um, I'll also come in here, maybe grab a dark brown. I'm just adding some, you know, some contrast to these rocks in areas that need it. Maybe too much right there. <laughs> you know, it's always good to experiment with things and see how everything's working. You know, and I had my opacity at 100, which is probably not very smart. Uh, but we'll come back in here with maybe a yellow slash greenish tint, a very light one. Say OK. You know, with all that lava in there, it's going to be emitting this yellow red light. So um, adding some green in there it could be the light interacting, the light from the lava, you know, interacting with diffuse color on the rock, changing it to a very, you know, kind of almost a, a light greenish looking color. You know, it's not going to be straight orange on the rock. It's going to do some cool stuff. So now what I'll do is I'll, I will grab a yellow now and say OK. I'll change my brush to this feathered one and maybe just come in and that's too dark, maybe much lighter. And the opacity needs to be way down. Except I want this to be now red. Maybe even a darker red. And so I have that all in a separate layer. So now I can say, you know, it's on soft light, but what happens if I change it to overlay or hard light? You can get some interesting effects but we'll keep it on overlay and just scale the opacity down. So now I have some cool looking textures in here. It's starting to come along. So right now I'm still not very happy with the rocks. Um, I need some really contrasted edges and stuff so I'm going to If that um, these rocks like a custom, you know, beveled look to them, um, just by using a, a f you know hard edge brush here in Photoshop, um, you know, and it's working pretty well. It's giving me some of that natural look that I wanted, that hand chiseled feel that rocks often have. At least, you know, rocks that have been formed by lava. And, you know, all rocks have different properties. It's good to study some rocks um, before you start painting or sculpting them. You know, everything's different. So always keep that in mind when you're, you know, painting stuff. Um, you know, if you were to, you know, paint this material or this rock, what would it look like on a sphere? How would the material interact um, or be shaded on a sphere? you got to think about those types of things. Um, Maybe now I'll add some highlights. Maybe make this a pinkish type highlight. And but we want this on a separate layer, so it's not on painting on overlay. And we probably want this lower, really low opacity. Um, oftentimes highlights will be right next to um, dark spots. You know, to kind of give it that feel like it's an edge.
So that's just what I'm doing now. It's just areas of rock that, you know, I'm trying to sculpt with paint right now. Sculpt with color. Areas that need to be up are going to have some light on them. And this is why it's always useful to be doing speed paints and improving your painting skills as an artist. You'll be using these techniques, you know, almost all the time. And I don't like that pink color, so I'm just going to go to, or that pink color I was using. So I'm going to change the hue of it to be something, you know, maybe, maybe a lighter blue. That looks okay. Just lower the opacity down a little bit. Um, and then zoom out and kind of look at it, see how it, how it's, you know, coming along. It's good. I think the orange is still a bit intense. Um, so I'm going to come back in with some dark. I bet I want the opacity to be higher. And I want this to be more colorful. So I'll go with yes. Okay. And a dark brown is always a good choice because brown's very close to red, which, you know, you think of shadows being like dark or black, you know. Um, well, if there's lava everywhere, they're going to have a tint of reddish or brown or yellowish to them, you know. So always think about your shadow colors and, and how those should be affecting your material that you're painting. Okay, so it's you know it's coming along, making progress. Um, one thing I'm going to do is select all of these, duplicate them, Control E, so I have this one master layer here or composition layer. It's been comped together. And I'm just going to say filter, artistic, um, and try diff some different painting techniques again. I use this a lot, um, and it can help kind of give that your your textures that hand painted feel to them. Um, or for in our case, you know rocks. It could give it some interesting details. So if I zoom in here, you can kind of see the effects that that did. Um, and it kind of, you know, makes it look pretty cool. And I'm just going to lower the opacity so it's not um, so prominent. Um, and you can see it really helps. It might be subtle, but it, it definitely helps the realistic, or the realism on this. Um, next, I'm going to maybe say vibrance. Start playing with some of my vibrance settings or saturation, and just seeing what, what, what happens. And I don't like that. Um, however, I'm going to come back down here to my lines layer. Hit W, select inverse and I'm going to say select modify feather um, 3 something very light and I'm going to come up here and say I don't like to cover that lava so I'll say hue saturation um, and now I can go and change it and make it darker more orange or more yellow however I feel So we'll say that one's good, and I'll duplicate this layer, and say, oops, I don't want to duplicate it. Um, I want to copy, paste, and this one will say image, 
adjustments, hue saturation, and this one will be very yellow. Very light, like so. Um, say OK. So now I can go in here and just erase some of these areas that I want to be dark, um, at least in the lava, and break it up even more. And you know, in other times I could spend more time doing this and getting more desired effects. Um, and maybe saying, you know, I'm going to select, well, don't really like those changes, so I'll just delete those layers. But I will come in here and say, do the same thing. Feather, three, maybe I'll play with the contrast. And I'm on the wrong layer. so I just affected the contrast of that just slightly that'll work uh, next thing I'm going to do is come up here to adjustments and say I want a photo filter of let's say let's see what a cooling filter does so the cooling filter I kind of like on those rocks it, it does have some good effects on them, um, but I'll move it up and just apply it to, um, you know, my, actually won't do that, move it up here and apply it to my shadows and highlights, and then maybe I'll duplicate this, this layer a few times, okay, much better. So I'm selecting my lava again. Um, I'm going to come up, create a new layer here, brush, and this time I'm going to grab a orange, like so, and just do some painting in areas that I want more orange, uh, maybe a darker orange. Or maybe not, maybe a red. in some areas. You know, I really want those yellow parts to only be in a few areas. But I might undo that actually. Um, come in here and say Blending options, inner glow, and we'll set this at red.
I'll create a new comp layer and pass three. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same thing. Filter, artistic, and try some different... Um, usually the dry brush works pretty cool, but I'm just going to see what else we can get. Um, you know, paint details. Um, that one actually looks pretty cool. So I'm going to select it, lower its opacity way down, and you can see it kind of sharpens everything um, and gives us some interesting colors. Um, so uh, I like that. Again, um, I'm going to close pass 3. You can kind of see the difference between pass 3, pass 2, pass 1, and our selection layer. You know, you can see the progress that we've made. Um, and I'm pretty happy with, with how it's looking um, for, you know, the short amount of time that I've been doing this. Um, obviously, this could be taken into much further detail um, if we had more time. But, you know, this is just to kind of show you guys my process um, as opposed to showing off artwork. One thing I'm going to do real quick is create a new layer and grab my brush and I'm going to come over here and grab my uh, burn tool and you can see what a burn tool does is you know it'll make areas darker. Um, you don't want to use it too much but I'm going to use it to kind of give a sense of okay this rock is um, you know down lower than the other rocks and I'll say um, I'll actually come to this layer maybe this one and continue to do this um, I can also use my dodge brush to create some highlights um, let's just duplicate these and control E um, that way you can see better you know, some rocks will be lighter than others. You know, they're all made up of the same material, these rocks, but some of them may be sticking out further than others, um, and others may be down lower and casting shadows on other rocks. Um, you know, so I'm just I'm using it sparingly, but I'm, I'm using it to um, create some cool effects on the rock. Some, some wear and tear, sorry for the phone. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm digging some of the stuff I'm doing with that guy. Uh, I'll come here and do the same thing with the burn again. Just burn some of these guys a little bit in some areas. And again, very sparingly doing this. And with that, I'll call it good. Um, okay, it's, it's interesting enough, I guess. Um, I'd like to go in and add more colors and more textures to my rocks, but um, this looks pretty decent, like I said, for the time we spent on it. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is collapse. I'm just going to create a new pass. Call this pass 4 and collapse everything inside. Control E collapses them. Um, and what I'm going to do now is say filter. Actually, for if I do filter um, other offset, you'll see it kind of give me, giving me this break. So it's because I've painted outside the canvas here. You can see, you know, with these oranges, you know, I was painting outside the canvas with the brush. So we'll undo the offset. And what I'll do is say control A, because it's now what it's doing is selecting everything in my canvas. I will say control C V, control V, you know, copy paste, delete the old one. And now I have the new one and if I move the if I turn everything off and I move the new one, you'll see there's no bleeding here along the edges because I wasn't painting outside the canvas. Uh, I selected only the area in the canvas. So now I can go to filter other offset and you know start start fixing some of these the seam that I'm getting because that's obviously not gonna tile very well. Um, I could do painting, or I can u also take advantage of, you know, spot healing brush, which this is CS4, and CS5 is much, much better. Um, you can see I'm not getting the best results with this guy. <laughs> um, and I usually like doing that in, in uh, inside of CS5. It works fantastic. So I'm just going to have to resort to using my brush to paint this stuff out.
Now I'm going to take my brush tool with a soft edge and just kind of glaze over these these rocks with a with a light color, maybe a light yellow-ish color. Maybe that's too yellow. Try blue. Much better. Okay, I'm going to make my final adjustments. Playing with levels look pretty good. I'll duplicate this layer so I don't lose anything. Auto color, auto contrast, tone I'm not liking. Um, I may go and add Uh, another photo filter. Maybe this one is cool. Okay. I will collapse those and you can see the differences. And I'll take this layer, hit E, and I'm just going to erase parts of different rocks. Give some rocks, um, a few of them, different you know, colors before the adjustment. Mostly ones in the middle so I don't lose any tiling on the edges. Um, can make it look kind of cool. And I'll lower the opacity down a little bit. So now our rocks have all kinds of colors in them. As you can see, it looks like a rock for the most part. Okay, that concludes painting the diffuse, tileable texture, um, if you want to test this out, we can do that in Max later. Um, the next part is going to be going over creating your glow maps, spec maps, normal maps, etc. Thank you for watching.